Welcome back to Talk Colada, presented by Coded Collection. Coded Collection, the official merchandise of Talk Colada and of Boot Crew Media. You can get your Coded Collection merchandise at codedcollection.com. Use the code Colada10, that's C U L O T T A 10, for 10% off your purchase. Talk Colada, decorated by Helm Paint, and it is clipped. By H2O Salon and Spa. It's Christmas time. You got to get a clean cut. Go to H2O Salon and Spa. On today's show, we have head football coach for the Jesuit High School Blue Jays, Ryan Manali. How you doing, coach? Doing well. Doing well. Thanks for having me. How's the atmosphere at Carrollton and Banks? It's a beautiful time right now. Uh, you know, our kids are diving in, obviously. Uh, school started back this week, so um, academic workload with the athletics is just a great week for them, and uh, and I'm sure they're looking forward to win each day right now, spending our last few days together. Um, do you feel just walking through the halls, uh, the players, uh, you know, the fans, the the students who, you know, will be packing Ullman Stadium on Saturday? Do you just feel a, a different different kind of energy? No doubt. There is a positive vibe. There's great energy going on. Um, you know, super excited about it Saturday night uh, as far as for, for all the students, uh, the whole student body, but especially my team, just to experience the state championship. Uh, they already got the lifetime memory in the semifinals and now one step further in the state championship and super happy. Uh, been in the state championship before. So I'm happy for my kids to be able to step on the field and compete for a state championship. And, and you know, and then it, it's like you said, it is electric on Carrollton and Banks. And I'm just so happy from, you know, the administration, faculty and staff all the way down. And then all the alums and everybody in the community supporting the Jays right now. It's pretty awesome. Absolutely. How hard is it um, just as a high school coach in general, high school players? I and mean, we're talking about 14 to 18 year old young men to flip the switch, right? After such a big win at Brother Martin, um, you know, Jack Rivier, uh, I assume, will win. Uh, if not, he's uh, the Fox 8 player of the week. Um, I know, you know, I, people are voting, people are getting excited about that, but that, that game's in the past. How, how hard is it to flip the switch for these guys? And obviously, you know, um, with it being now Wednesday, um, you know, dial in for, for the next game. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, that was kind of like a Super Bowl type game performance uh, to beat them guys. And, you know, I, you rely on your leaders, you rely on your team, you rely on the kids and you're relying on 14, 18 year olds to get it done. And, um, you know, I, they haven't let me down all year. It's been um, you know, 28 solid seniors with the whole staff of Blue Jays and, um, you know, roster full. And, and, you know, I'm expecting them to kind of rise to the occasion and now play the most talented team we've played all year. And uh, I'm expecting to play some good Jesuit football on Saturday and hope that's what uh, we see. Absolutely. We, we were joking last week, and, you know, I'm excited that I get a chance to talk to you again before the big game. Um, so I appreciate you coming on. Uh, but we were joking last week about the Thanksgiving meals, you know, if you had to send a – a mass text or a mass email to parents saying, you know, are no more than two plates or anything like that. But I got to tell you, coach, I mean, the Thanksgiving meal might be, might be the trick. I mean, the way y'all played against brother Martin, uh, do you, do you have any, um, you know, changes as far as scheduling diet, things like that, especially with the game being on Saturday, are you going to encourage a, another big meal on, on Friday night, you know, to, to get these guys ready for Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think they 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 well fed. Uh, I think the group does okay. They don't they don't they don't they're not begging for too much food. You know, we give them some smoothies during the week. Um, you know, and then and then I think they're eating well, so they're going to continue to do so. And uh, you know, I think they're doing a good job of managing everything. And and I think they putting everything focus their focus starting to turn on Saturday night. And all you have to do is uh, say the word Catholic high football, and I mean, I think their attention they get their it gets their attention. Um, so, man, I think, I think we're going to start turning the page. I think it's already been done. Um, you know, and if not, we only have a couple more days to get it turned to play against one of the best, uh, teams in, in not only in the state and the country. And, uh, we're excited about that. Yeah. Um, how does, uh, 
you know, Coach Manali, for those, you know, joining the show or, or listening to this after the fact, um, is in his first year as head coach. Um, and the last time that happened was, uh, you know, your, your predecessor, Coach Sanji. Uh, the first year as head coach makes it to the state championship. Um, have you reached out to Coach Sanji just for advice on, on that aspect? You know, we talk, um, you know, we talked, he, he shot me a text and good luck. And, you know, we, we've been talking regularly through the school year. Um, you know, um, fortunately for me and, and a handful of guys and staff, we've been blessed uh, to be in a state championship the last uh, two years. I think the last three out of four state championships, <clears throat> excuse me, in a division that, you know, we coached in and we were able to make it to the state championship. So, you know, a lot of experience there with that. Uh, you know, and, and I just love the kids. They, they, they just, they, they hungry, uh, they in uncharted waters. And I think, um, I, I think they know it's a big game. I think they know it's a big game and just hope that they can get over, uh, that brother Martin game, as you said. And, and I think we will, I mean, it's just jazz with football and that's how we play it. Coach, can you talk a little bit about your defense, uh, for me, you know, Jack Rivier obviously had four touchdowns, um, and, you know, guys like him and Jay Larson and even Aiden Corbello, um, you know, with a, a great kicking game, you know, uh, those guys get obviously a lot of the highlight reels, right? And, uh, but, you know, it seemed like number one, Dominic Lodis was all over the field against Brother Martin, um, really stepping up. Obviously, Doherty and, and Barnett are guys that you've spoken about before, but just your entire defense was really the true MVP against Brother Martin and, um, just talk about their energy and their focus, you know, coming off the Brother Martin game and leading in Catholic. Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with my staff that uh, <clears throat> they give the game plan and and work hard preparing our players. Excuse me. To, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. That bug's going around right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, it, it starts with Coach Rule. Uh, you know, Coach Rule does a great job with linebacker play. Uh, Coach Bagley up front, Coach Devon in the secondary. I feel that we uh, very well coached on defense. I trust them guys 100%. I never butt into really what they're doing um, just because I have that trust with them. Uh, they prepare their players a game. They give a get players a game plan, and then it's the players that just turn it, uh, really turn it up on game day. Uh, they prepare during the week, and then they then they play they play play Jesuit football on on that Friday or as this case Saturday night. And, uh, you know, Dom was all over the field. But I tell you, our defensive line is undersized overall, and they just play as hard as they possibly can. Uh, linebacker play is, uh, you know, I would look at them as leaders on the team. Uh, solid, it's solid group for sure. Our secondary has been improving pretty much each week. And, you know, what a challenge they have this week. And, you know, a wide receiver that's uh, probably choosing between LSU, Alabama, and them type of teams. So I think uh, – I'm super proud of where they're at. They played lights out against Brother Martin. Uh, they definitely wanted that game. Um, and, and we really played a physical football game, clean football game on defense. So very proud of the performance. And then, look, this week, I mean, that page needs to be turned. Uh, you know, I, I haven't talked about the Brother Martin game in front of kids at all. Uh, that'll be done after this week. We could talk more about the season. But, uh, you know, defensively, they got their hands full. I mean, we're playing a Catholic offensive line that's huge. We have, uh, you know, they have an LSU commit on it. They have multiple college players all over the place. I think they average somewhere around 300 pounds up front on the offensive line. That's across the board. Uh, two running backs are phenomenal, both kind of co both college players. You know, wide receiver Samson on the outside. I talked about Alabama, LSU kind of kid. So, you know, our hands are full. It will be by far the best uh, offense that we faced all year. So it's the biggest challenge for these guys, but it's the next challenge, and that's what we've been striving on all year is that next challenge and making sure we're prepared to the best of our abilities for it. Coach, you played for a state championship uh, in 2017, 2019, and 2020 for, for De La Salle. Um, what, if, what, if anything, do you take from – just the preparation, obviously both teams are different, coaching staffs are different, um, but just the preparation as a head coach, as the, as the leader of the team, working with your, you know, your uh, positional coaches and your, your leaders, you know, Jack Rivia and your quarterback, what, what kinds of things just prep-wise do you kind of enhance 
uh, throughout the week leading up to a state state championship game? Well, I mean, you just want to try to detail as everything as possible. We try to make it as routine. It's as, as the same as it's always been. There's never been one game that's bigger than the other one. Uh, we want to prepare and play our best football that week, whoever we play. Uh, we try to throw out the opponent and, and, and focus on us. And, um, you know, and I think that's where we're at right now, just trying to figure out a way. Now, we respect our opponents. We know, and then Catholic High, we know how dangerous they are. I mean, in week nine, going into week nine, they were the 19th ranked team in, a, in the country. Uh, week nine, going in that game. And it's just, it's amazing. And the only loss was to a rival in Woodlawn. And it's an interesting kind of, uh, the way it unfolded with us is uh, our games that we lost due to Hurricane Ida was uh, Woodlawn and St. Paul's. And both them games would have wound up having some common opponents yep. and get a, ve a very good measurable, but um, it didn't happen. And, and you know, and, and we haven't played – we haven't played really anybody that's still live in the playoffs outside of our district the way it worked. Uh, you know, we played Riverdale and HL Bourgeois, nine district games, you know, uh, no disrespect to those programs, but they're not still playing in the semis or finals. Right. Uh, a lot of teams that Catholic played in the non-district are still playing in the semis or the finals when you look at that 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 gauntlet of a schedule they had. So, I mean, we've only played against district teams. So it's really going to be interesting to see how good our Catholic league is this year when we go out and play against a Catholic high team that's been playing lights out against the whole state all year long. Right. And, uh, get a chance to look at them scores is pretty impressive. So, you know, I think the state championship being there and knowing how it goes and knowing how you usually get on the field or early, different things like that. Uh, there's a lot of things to it. The paperwork, I finally, you know, it, it's time consuming, but you get that down uh, the distractions between, you know, I love them, but the interviews and the calls and the constant, you know, you still have to get work done and um, you know, there's still work to have, be done. So I think the, the more you end this game, the more you get used to it. So, uh, fortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm seasoned with it and um, excited for our Blue Jays to take the field on Saturday. No doubt. And, Coach, um, I, and I'm sorry if I, I'm way off on this, but have you coached against Catholic High in, in your football coaching career? And, and if, if not, who on, who on your staff, um, you know, might be able to – um, have some experience with that or, or know a little bit more about the team, you know, given the dynamic of the Catholic league and, you know, with you being at De La Salle, it's hard to, like you said, you know, to, to get out of the district and, and play those games. And obviously you lost those games during hurricane Ida. So just, you know, from the aspect of not having played Catholic um, in recent years, what do you know about them? Yeah, I mean, I, I know the town level for sure. Uh, I know they're very well coached. Uh, you know, I, I know their, uh, you know, head coaches from talking to him on the phone a little bit uh, and then hearing people in the community talk about how good of a job he does. Uh, you know, I, I was able to meet, I know the defense coordinator some, uh, you know, I think he does a phenomenal job. Um, you know, over the years, uh, building that relationship with, with you high, playing them in Division two mm -hmm. so semifinals or finals, they've always played Catholic. So you got to see Catholic on film that one game against them. Okay. So you can see a little bit about them. But, um, you know, I don't think it, it, it's going to compare. Coaching against them, you have to go back 20 years ago when I was at Archbishop Roma High School. Okay. Must have been 20, somewhere 20, 20 plus years we played in the playoffs. We met them uh, early on in my coaching career. We scrimmaged them every year. But it's, you talk about a totally different team. You're talking right. about there wasn't nobody even born yet that's playing in this game. Yeah, um, I didn't know if y'all had any exhibition games or anything against them or scrimmages, you know, at De La Salle or anything like that. <clears throat> no, we've not seen them recently. So it's an interesting matchup. And, uh, you know, they, they, but they, you can tell on film they are a well coached and just a very good football team and uh, uh, <laughs> a talented football team. I don't know if you're going to find too many more talented in the state. Coach, I'm going to ask uh, the same question I asked you before the Brother Martin game, and if there's not a percentage of, of, of film that you watch or, you know, that your coaches watch. But um, I, I don't know. It's just very intriguing to me um, as far as film and preparation goes, uh, especially before a team that you haven't, you know, played in a while, as we talked about. But, you know, the percentage of, of film that's looked at and, and the, the film that's, you know, that's focused on, is it more of let's look at how how you know we succeeded against Brother Martin and maybe where we you know we didn't score on certain drives and where the defense allowed 
you know, touchdowns or is it more of, you know, let's look at, let's look at, let's study this, this Catholic high bears team. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a little bit of both. So we have, we have the last three games, uh, you know, we'll break down their last three games and try to see as much as we can on them. Um, you know, and you can see their game plans, but then also we want to focus on our last three games, um, you know, and see what we did, uh, what, if anything gave us fits, like what gave us fits where, and uh, try to correct that because, you know, the game of coaching, when you study in film, when you see something that works against another opponent, sometimes you, you know, you're looking at, okay, can we do that against them or not? <clears throat> so, excuse me. So I think that, um, I, I, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, like I said, we broke down that last three games. You know, I got that nice media screen behind me. I kind of see in this in the phone here. <laughs> so it's, been, it's been used a lot. Um, but outside of breaking down their games, it's very important to see what we did and see what Curtis and Brother Martin did and, and what successes they had against us that uh, we can clean up because we're going to see it again. Coach, I know uh, fans, parents, spectators, reporters um, – opposing coaches uh, have all been really impressed with how you uh, cycle in players and how you, um, you know, you move around the offensive line, you, you, you bring in, uh, you know, different schemes at running back at wide receiver and, and all over the field, really. Um, before I get into kind of the, the running back game, I just want you to talk a little bit about <laughs> The, the guys in the trenches, uh, specifically on the O-line. Uh, what a great performance last week. Um, what a great performance, you know, everybody is expecting, you know, on, on Saturday from both Jesuit and Catholic, you know, O-lines and D-lines. But uh, specifically your O-line, can you just talk about uh, those guys and, and, and how they, you know, are looking forward to Saturday? Yeah, I mean, there's so much growth there from the beginning of the season. I mean, uh, you know, Coach Paul Hattie does our offensive line. Um, you know, I try to assist and probably uh, annoy, him, annoy him at times getting in there with the offensive line. You can annoy <laughs> Hattie. He but can he, uh, but he, he does the offensive line with, um, you know, and then uh, I know uh, Nick, Coach Nolfi, he, he assists with uh, some tight, the tight ends and fullbacks. So, yeah, them two guys, two good coaches that are preparing their guys hard. But it's really the growth of these young men. Uh, you know, from from when we started to now, and a lot of it had to do is I had to see who who does what and who can do what. We we've played as many ten as ten offensive linemen. Uh, we played ten guys. We played mul we played multiple fullbacks, tight ends. Uh, but over the course of the year, I mean, you look at there's only there's only two players that played every that started every single game up front for us. Um, you know, so it, it's been a it's been a juggling act. And now towards the end of the year here, we think we found what we're looking for. And uh, we try to put the pieces in a place for the right time. And that's the playoffs. And uh, now we have the same starting lineup going, uh, most part, same starting lineup going for the third week in a row. So we're happy about that. And those guys are developing nicely. That's always helpful. Um, just stretching the field a little bit to the, the wide receiving core, um, obviously, Obviously, Jace Larson uh, had a great game against Brother Martin and, uh, you know, has been, you know, the receiving leader um, for this Jesuit football team this season. Um, can you talk a little bit about your your other receivers, you know, maybe some younger guys um, on on the receiving core? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our receiving core, they led by, you know, Coach Jambaluka, who does a great job. Uh, he coaches our receivers. Played at LSU and coaching at Jesuit for many years. Um, happy to have him. Uh, you know, so he prepares them guys, and it's just game to game. It depends on what defense is giving us. I mean, Jace is obviously a very good receiver, uh, but we practice every week ready for them to get bracketed or anything like that because there's not, there's not, it's we're not uh, too shabby behind them. We've just been more of a running football team. You know, we have a junior that works extremely hard, Jason Thompson. We have a uh, junior and Jack Lowe who came from the basketball program. Uh, we have a senior in Keith Pittman, who's a uh, baseball player, came out for the first time, first year. We have a senior in Matthew Reeder. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll throw a freshman, Jasper Parker, in there at either running back or receiver. We'll play one of our tight ends or both our tight ends at receiver and Chance Woodfield and uh, Hollis McDaniel. We'll, we'll, we'll put them out there. And, uh, you know, really, we, we – we, so we, we do play a lot of guys in a lot of different packages. And 
all of them are ready to, you know, if we in a running game, they know what they're doing. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And if we have to get into a, um, you know, a throwing war uh, because we can't run the ball, then um, then we have guys that can do that. Absolutely. And uh, Jerron Duplessis had a had a touchdown against Brother Martin. Um, as you mentioned, Jasper Parker uh, played a great game against Curtis. Um, a little bit about your 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 running back group. Yeah, I mean, I'm, we're, we're blessed to have Coach CJ, Coach Jones. Uh, coach Jones is, is the running backs coach. He's uh he's been with me for nine straight years at De La Salle and now came over um, to Jesuit. Blessed to have him. He does a great job developing. Um, his stable of backs, and you can see that through the year here. And, uh, you know, Jerron DePlus is a junior. You can see him getting better and better through the year. Uh, Harry Reinhardt gets carries. He's a junior. Uh, we have a couple sophomores and, and Patrick Berrigan and um, uh, Landon Garcia. And then we have a freshman that's, you know, obviously people are seeing more than, than a lot of the other guys and Jasper Parker as he's a talented young man that uh, you can see in practice getting better each week. Uh, you know, so it's a matter of time before, you know, he's kind of unleashed out there. And uh, but but, you know, we're developing and Coach Jones, you know, hats off to him. He does a great job of having them guys prepared. Jasper is obviously super talented. Reinhardt plays with a ton of grit and Jerron Duplessis. When I tell you he refused to he refused to go down to score that touchdown. I mean, really just the will to get in there uh, was super impressive. Um, so congrats to to you and your your running backs coaches, um, you know, leading those guys. Just a final thought, Coach. Um, the game is Saturday at Yulman Stadium. Um, it's a different atmosphere. It's a different setting. It's a different day than high school players usually play football. Um, just the excitement of, of going into, you know, these final days of the school week and, and the student body. Just a, a final word on that, if you could. Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. You know, I'm trying to embrace it and take it all in because, you know, we do have these seniors and they bought in and it's going to be tough to let them go after Saturday. I mean, you wish you can continue on with them. You wish you can keep developing for two, three years, but they're ready to go out in the world in just a few months and just really, really take over and dominate and be very successful young men. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So I'm kind of excited to, you know, coach with this coaching staff one more game. Uh, play with these seniors one more game and um, and see where it takes us. You know, as far as the school, uh, super excited. Can't wait to see what the Gizzard looks like in a state championship. Uh, the Gizzard's our student body that's, uh, you know, the rivals any. And I know Catholic has a huge one. And uh, so <laughs> those two student bodies right there are going to be the biggest thing to hit you on. And it's, uh, it's going to be super exciting. And, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to us playing our best game that we possibly can. And if our best is good enough, it's good enough. And if it's not, I'm going to be proud as heck of these guys. Uh, and, and it'd be really interesting to see. It's it's really how how does Catholic League, as we want our better teams, the best team in the Catholic League, how that, how that matches up against Catholic High, who's one of the best teams in the state, and then a top team in the nation. And, uh, you know, looking forward to that challenge of seeing these guys play against this, this amount of college talent. Yep. As the late Father Fitzgerald and Father McGinn and now the current president, Father Brown, always says the best is yet to come. And uh, yeah, the best correct. is yet the best is yet to come at Yulman Stadium, 7 p.m. Saturday, December 4th. Jesuit versus Catholic, the Blue Jays versus the Bears. Uh, there's some wild people in New Orleans and, and Baton Rouge. <laughs> Coach, we had, I think, Tad Gormley fits 24. 5,600 people looked like they were at least 21,000 there at Tad Gormley. You expecting a, you expecting a packed crowd? I am. I think, I think they said 30,000 is the max. Oh, okay. Uh, it is. Oh, okay. I, I think, I think so. I think that's what I, I saw. Could already. Be uh, but it may not be, I could be wrong, but I would expect it to be a uh, packed house and not too many empty seats uh, yeah. to see these two teams play. And, you know, I think both, both programs, the kids deserve that. And, uh, it's going to be a great night for football and hope, hope everybody can get out there and, and support their team, whether it's the Jays or the Bears or just coming to see some good football and, you know, uh, hope we can find a way. And, and there's no doubt about that. Uh, the best is yet to come for the Blue Jays, uh, no matter the outcome on Saturday night. I'm looking it up real quick, Coach. There you go. There you go. 
I'll take your word on it. You are spot on, my friend. 30,000. I don't know who told me 18,000 yesterday. That was way off. I assume that a college <laughs> football stadium would fit more than, than Tad Gormley, but, you know. Uh, uh, you never know. Sure. No. <laughs> All yeah. right, brother. Well, uh, Coach right. Ryan Manali, head football coach for the Jesuit Blue Jays. Coach, best of, best of luck, best of vibes, best of prep uh, moving forward into uh, Thursday. And uh, we'll see you out there on Saturday, man. Can't wait. Can't wait. Thanks and go Jays. Yep. Yes, sir. Have a good one, man. All right. All right. You too. God Thanks. Bless. All right, folks. That was head football coach Ryan Manali. Tomorrow, uh, we will interview Coach David Simino of the Catholic High School Bears. I'm Jack Kulata. This is Talk Kulata, where we talk a lot of sports. And I am signing out. <laughs>